Hello, hello. Welcome to Creating Wealth and Wellness, the podcast where we take you on a journey where freedom is cultivated through personal development, where women connect to fuel their futures, and where wealth is created as a byproduct of being well. And as usual, today you're here with me, Tara Misseldine, and my co-host, Amanda Kingsley. Hello, Amanda. Hello. Hi, hi. We are done. We have, we have come back around. Uh, and today we're actually going to be talking about following our calling, which is one of the reasons that we come back around every week. Um, so before we do that, why don't we start with our gratitudes like we always do? Sweet. Um, well, I am looking at a bottle of the cleanse formula, which is a medicinal mushroom supplement. Um, I ran out and a friend brought me like part of her model because I can't imagine my life without this product. So <laughs> I will put a link to this product in the show notes, but cleanse, um, is, it's like my have to before I go to sleep at night or else I don't have a good night's sleep. Um, oh. it's liver support and, um, just like all kinds of everything I need. So. That's my gratitude. Awesome. <laughs> really, my gratitude is for really good supplements. So really other people supplements. probably have their favorite <clears throat> too. That mm -hmm. one's mine right now. That's awesome. Okay. So I'm going to say that I am grateful for fall spices because I wait for this stuff all year long. You're one of those. Oh, <laughs> Cinnamon, clove, nutmeg. Everything that smells like a pine forest. <laughs> Everything that smells like fire smoke. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm so into it. I, uh, I, I love it so much and I wait for it all year long. I try to convince myself I can use it all year and it doesn't work as well as it does as soon as like leaves start to fall. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm not, I love it so much. I'm like, if I hear pumpkin spice again, I'm going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not, I have to say that I am, I am no longer a consumer of like commercially made pumpkin spice. Yeah. I don't like it. Like I oh. have gotten maybe like two, I have gotten two pumpkin spice lattes since they came out in the season and they were so epically disappointing. So yeah. I like, I made them out to be like true pumpkin spice fall. Immersion. Like actual cinnamon. Yeah. And, and actual. they are not. However, that what I'm drinking right now is my own famous slash infamous mushroom latte that I love so much that you. Oh. To, and I am still pretty much addicted to it. Um, but it's that with a little bit of maple syrup and I put it in my milk frother with actual milk and some actual pumpkin spice, which is just a blend of the spices. Yeah. And it's amazing. This is what I have in mind every time that I go and pay $5 for a pumpkin spice That's latte. That's not what you get. That I can't even <laughs> drink because it tastes disgusting. <laughs> but I do have a candle that's Northwoods smell. And it's like a little bit of like that, you know, woodsy spice with like balsam fir and juniper berry. And it's actually amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> I wish I could bathe in that smell. <laughs> I okay. love that you love this time of year. I love it so much. I live <laughs> for it. <laughs> I'm like in a fetal ball, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel more like I could actually sprout feathers out of my back and like fly into the sky like an eagle. <laughs> Incredible. I love it. <laughs> okay, so enough of our gratitudes. I mean, so is that your calling to sprout wings and fly? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my calling is just to like live in really good imagery. I don't know. <laughs> really good metaphor, speaking metaphor. Yeah, so talk to me about following our callings. <laughs> well, I'm really good at this. <laughs> I'm so good at this that people sometimes think I'm crazy. <laughs> um, I don't have any, like, well, it's funny. I definitely struggle with letting go and change a little bit, but I also have zero, like, a resistance to following my calling. Like, I can do in one thing, super strong, super powerful, all in, 100%. And as soon as I learn my lesson from it, like as soon as it served the purpose it needs to serve, I'm like, 
I feel the calling and I'm like, what's next? <laughs> and so I would say that I'm actually, even with my resistance to letting go and to change, I'm really good at following my calling and it can mm -hmm. make me look like an absolute nut job, but it's so amazing. It's like, for me, when you follow the whispers, when you follow the ideas, when you, um, especially if they're like whispering to you for a while, <laughs> um, that's where magic happens in life. Like when you listen to where you're supposed to go and go there, magic happens. <laughs> absolutely so some, good sometimes a mess happens also but magic oh, sure. definitely happens <laughs> yeah. yeah and and i also am not the kind of person who if i follow a calling to something and it doesn't work out i'm not like oh my gosh i should what was i thinking i shouldn't have done that or i must have not been listening right i'm like oh well that gave me exactly what i needed to know to listen to this next calling um so okay. i never so, what's that sorry go ahead i want to finish but then i'm going to source something out of you i just think that like i don't ever regret following my calling ever, ever, ever. Um, mm -hmm. I regret not following yeah, my calling. So I know I'm supposed to do something and I ignore it. And then I might look back and be like, you knew you were supposed to do that earlier than you actually did. So like, why didn't you just listen in the first place? But I, n I have never, I've done things that were like massive epic flops. <laughs> and never regretted them. Yeah. But I, just, I echo that. Yeah. yeah. The sitting and the not listening that I can have some regret for. Okay, awesome. So now, you might be sorry about this, but too bad. I'm going to go there anyway. As a self-proclaimed expert and someone who follows their callings, <laughs> I mean, and also as a fellow life coach, I know that clients have come to me in two camps. There are people who totally hear what their calling is and know that it's meant for them. Yeah. And whether or not they, they feel courageous enough or um, secure enough to follow it, they mm -hmm. sense that it's there, they know it, they feel it, they hear it. Yeah. And then the other camp uh -huh. is the ones who know that there's something and they have no idea what it is. Yeah. So speaking to those people, what those does it have no idea? Is? Yeah. You know, mm, yeah. And I'm sure that you have had them too in your life coaching work where they just, they know that there's something they're, they're either feeling a void or they're feeling an incompleteness. They're feeling, you know, they're feeling a magnetism toward oh, or like away from where they are, but it's not toward anything in particular. They don't know what is calling them the way that other people do. What does a calling feel like in your body, in your spirit? in your thoughts when you hear it <laughs> you have me like wanting to get up and dance or something like these are my, <laughs> these are my favorite people to work with like th these are like if i could just show up and be present with these people every day all day long i would be i'd be following my calling <laughs> nice, nice um this is the most exciting like people who there's, well, the, the, the next category of people would be people who don't believe in callings and don't believe in purposes and don't believe in, and those people, you can't, that you're not, you know, it's, it's, I have no desire to help those people believe there's a calling. And I'm not sure that either one of us have ever had them approach us for life. No, they don't really reach There's out people to who us. don't really believe in life coaching either. <laughs> yeah. So you're talking about the people who know there's more and they just yeah. don't know what it is. Right. They can't yeah. hear where, where, where it's calling them from, you know? Oh, this, yeah. is my, this is my happy place. So <laughs> cool. A huge part of this work for me is the Y word. Huge mm -hmm. part of it is the Y word. And you asked, what does it feel like in your body? And um, I think that takes some practice and it takes some getting used to and it takes some um, intention and awareness. But the easiest word I could describe for what it feels like is light. So 
there's like a lightness versus a heaviness. So when I am on a, um, a coaching call with somebody where they're discovering their why word, and I know it's shifting for you, Tara. So I would love to do another call with you. Um, because when my word changed, my why word changed, I went through the whole process again to, to figure that out. But if I were on a call um, with someone helping them figure out their why word, um, I do a lot of my calls by video so I can see them and I see the lifting. Like I see the lightning. I can feel it, but that doesn't even matter because they feel it and they always consistently feel it. So it's almost like it's, it's almost like a weight has been shifted. Like when you feel, when you feel something that you know is truth and a calling would be a truth, right? Like if you're supposed to do something, it's your truth, right? It's like, it's where you're supposed to go. And when you hit that truth, when you hit that knowing, when you hit that calling, like there's like a lightning and it's a lightning of spirit, but it happens in the body. Like it's like a weight is lifted. You're like, Oh, that does feel better than this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't, where would you say you feel it in your body? That's what I see in like a big general perspective. There are certainly people who feel it like consistently in their gut or consistently mm -hmm. in their um, head or consistently in their heart. Um, but overall, I would say that it's a lightness. Do you, do you have a particular place that you feel it in your body? Yeah, I think it, it, is somewhere between my heart and my gut, sort of like that center, you know, like when you, when you hold your hands at the base of your ribs, it's, yeah. there's something pulling right there that can't be ignored, that can't be, yeah. um, and it does, it doesn't feel like a heavy, like a pushing, it's totally a pull. Yeah, right. So, yeah. Um, I think that before you get to the point where you know your own body well mm -hmm. enough, I think I've never had someone who hasn't resonated with that like heavy and light feeling. Definitely. But, but once you like hone in on that a little more, then you can find it in a specific place in your body. And I think that's a place that you described as really common for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but not center, I, you know, yeah. the center. Center, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's like your gut, it's your intuitive center. Yeah. And, um, when I have an idea that is that I know is big, that I know is like on point, I actually get nauseous. Yeah. <laughs> like you'd think like, well, that doesn't sound very appealing. Well, morning <laughs> but, sickness. <laughs> yeah, totally. Actually, yeah. very much that. When someone introduced that concept to me I was like oh yeah that's totally what it is it's like something new is like inside of me and bubbling and birthing and growing but I get totally nauseous like and that's one of the ways I know I'm really on point but that doesn't happen with like um should I get this book or that book or should I take this program or not take it like that doesn't happen to me with the little stuff but with the big stuff that nausea comes in and I'm like oh keep going keep going yeah so okay that's a that's actually a great other point um so what makes a calling a calling because when you're saying that like I'm I'm feeling like small that's like practicing listening to your intuition for what you want and what's meant for you. Yeah. Um, but like, obviously what book you're going to read next is not, it doesn't really have much bearing on your calling. So like, what yeah, is it's like, it's in the calling. intuitive category, but not. Oh yeah, totally. Calling. It's like those, those little practice moments where we get to listen for what's meant for us. Yeah. But, like, what calling doesn't, calling? doesn't go away. Right. Uh, for most people, I say they try and ignore their calling a few times before it comes, you know, before they like can't stop. Yeah. I'm totally one of those. I'm really great at hearing yeah. the call. I'm not so great at, <laughs> I'm not as great about really following it. Well, like you said, a calling is usually much bigger. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm, I'm meant to write this book or I'm meant to work with this population or I'm meant to move to Europe and I don't know why. <laughs> right? Like, it's usually something much bigger. So of course it, you have some resistance to it. Like 
I mean, yeah, it usually comes at a cost to follow it, right? It's not usually like yeah. an easy, there's usually something that has to either, you have to leave something behind to move toward the, toward it or, yeah, you know, it's not usually like a, oh, willy nilly, like, oh, it's fine. Let's just follow this calling and nothing's going to change. Yeah. It'll always change. I feel like the calling too is like, there's a, there's a, there's a clarity where you're like, I don't know how this is going to happen, but it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like, I have no idea how, but somehow I'm moving to Europe. Like, <laughs> and you, you can feel that clarity in the big picture while you also feel maybe fear and like nerves and anxiety about the steps to get there. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, like, yeah, totally. Like, you know, where you know, the end game, but you might not have any idea about the steps or the process or what it's going to take to get there. But the end is super clear. Yeah. That, that feels like a calling to me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know where you need to end up. Yeah, have no clue how to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like you still have callings that are untended to? Untended to. At the moment, no. Yeah. Um, I, and I'm moving. I'm moving toward my a big calling right now, but in like a an anti typical conservative way for myself because yeah. usually once I once I hit that tipping point of like quote unquote following a calling I'm like all in yeah. everything else is negotiable like everything else moves to the side I'm yeah. <laughs> I can feel like a freight train you know where like something's moving with with and without me um and I'm I'm uncharacteristically conservative in the way that I'm following my calling right now but mm. I do feel like it's tended to there's yeah. more of like a a peaceful kind of nurturing um more like gardening than freight train yeah. <laughs> which is fine with me it feels really nice um but I don't know I don't think that I have anything that is untended to right now it's a good question what about <laughs> you um I have a calling that I know is in the someday but not something I'm actively interested in pursuing right now in my life, which is to do some hostess work. Mm. Um, I think it probably evolves from my love of helping people through transition. Mm -hmm. And I've done a lot of that in the birth work. And I definitely have like a lifelong calling to do hospice work. But I also know that now is not a time I have any interest or desire to pursue that yeah um so that's a great I mean there's a lot as usual this is a tip of the iceberg conversation yeah. around callings because there's so this has brought up so many new questions for me in regards to following the calling like um I guess I came in with the unspoken assumption that like you have one at a time you yeah. know and that's not true, obviously. And the more that you're speaking that, the more I know that there are things that I, I know are a huge part of who I am and who I want to be at the end of my days that yeah. I'm not necessarily pursuing right now with any real intention, but I know that they're there and they always will be there. Um, so that's really interesting. That's yeah. really interesting. I think there's probably people who have the capacity to hold space for more than one calling at a time. Yeah, or find ways of combining the two and yeah and then there's other people who maybe really are on a one at a time focus and that's they like if you sent them another calling they'd be like what yeah. I, I can't do two <laughs> things at once whereas me I'm like oh yeah I know I'll do hospice work someday but I also know that that's just space that I'm holding for the someday and yeah. I am a hundred percent clear that I'm not supposed to be doing that work right now. Yeah. Um, but I don't think, you know, I think that it's perfectly normal to be able to only hold space for one calling at a time or to have many things that you feel 
called to complete before you pass. Interesting. I love it. I All love right. It. Well. Well, I <laughs> highly recommend listening to your colleagues, everybody. Yes. Boy, boy, when you are cruising along and following that call and aligned and in tune. Oh, so good. Oh, my God. There is nothing better. There really isn't. There's just nothing better. Yep. That's when all the coincidences. Uh, all the <laughs> serendipities. <laughs> yeah. And you meet the right people and you pull into the right spots and you go to the right places. and Yep. Pretty awesome. Yep. You say the right words. Good stuff. All right. Well, that's it for now then. Do you have a ask this week? This week? <laughs> this week. Well, I'm, I'll make mine like super, oh, I just remembered something about my fall spice obsession. While I was in Boston at my 40 hour class, I discovered a latte that redeemed all lattes. Wow. <laughs> I know, I know. It was a vanilla cardamom latte from Pete's Coffee. Oh, I love Pete's. Oh yeah. my gosh. Absolutely amazing. Cardamom. And it's good for me and my household budget that there is no Pete's anywhere near me. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried making it at home yet? No, I haven't. Oh, <laughs> here we go. My latte is all gone, but I won't make another one today. It's too late. Um, <clears throat> let's see. My ask for today um, is your favorite fall recipes. And it can be savory or sweet, but I am all about nurturing yummy, decadent, and or hearthwarming foods. So... Send me your favorite recipes. Tag me on Instagram. That's probably the easiest way. My, at my all in life on Instagram. Tag me with your favorite fall recipe. Nice. I love it. I could use some good home cooking warm food right now. That would, sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to say my ask is um, that those of you who are listening, take one little step toward your calling one little step Ooh. and see how it feels just put your toe in the water and um see what's different or if you're already on that path do one little thing outside your comfort zone that you've been avoiding even though you are on the right track so that's my Ooh. ask yeah that might even apply to me <laughs> <laughs> okay my friend and all of my friends out there listening until next time